Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving an equation with fourth powers. So we have z to the fourth power equals negative 4 and we're going to be solving for z. I'll be presenting two methods at least and let's start with the first one. So our first method actually uses factoring. So whenever you have an expression like this with fourth powers, you can factor it most of the time. Let's go ahead and take a look at this special way of factoring. I'm going to go ahead and add 4 to both sides. z to the fourth plus 4 is equal to 0. So this is a quartic expression. It's kind of like a sum of two squares as well. But guess what? This can be factored. Something called Sophie Germain's identity. Sophie Germain is a great mathematician and we're going to use that identity. How do, we, how do we use it? We add something to turn this into a perfect square. So think about it. z to the fourth power is z squared squared. Right? And 4 is 2 squared. So we have the a squared and the b squared. What we're missing is 2ab. Remember, when you have a squared plus b squared plus 2ab, that can be written as a plus b squared. And of course, if you put a minus sign here, you can put a minus sign here too. Make sense? Now, so what is 2ab in this case? Since a is z squared and b is 2, 2ab would be 4z squared. So that's what we need to add to both sides. We have a 0 on the right hand side, so that this is what it's going to look like after the addition z to the fourth plus four plus four z squared, that's what we're adding, equals four z squared, right? Okay, great. So what does that give us though? Well, it gives us a perfect square on the left-hand side and the perfect square on the right-hand side. We will have two squares. So let's go ahead and write the left-hand side as z squared plus two quantity squared equals, and we can write this as two z or not 2z squared. Now, when you have a squared equals b squared, obviously you can go ahead and solve it with the square roots, the absolute value, so on and so forth. You could also do the following, subtract 2z quantity squared, and then factor it with difference of two squares. So either way is fine. Let's go ahead and use the first method. z squared plus two is either 2z or z squared plus 2 is negative 2z. Because notice that there are two numbers whose square equals 4z squared. Those are 2z and negative 2z. And this gives us two quadratic equations. Let's go ahead and solve each one. z squared minus 2z plus 2 equals 0. And this one is actually, you can easily solve it. I mean, any method is fine. It's not factorable, but quadratic formula is fine. You can do completing the square. Since it's kind of easy, let's go ahead and do it. I can write this as z squared minus 2z plus 1 equals negative 1, putting the one of the 1s on the right-hand side. And then the left-hand side is just z minus 1 squared equals negative 1. Remember, we're not necessarily looking for real solutions. Actually, we're not looking for real solutions. If it, It's better if it's not real, right? Because this is A plus BI, come on. So we're looking for imaginary or complex solutions. There are two numbers whose square equals negative 1. And remember this all the time, right? Something that you should never forget. I squared is equal to a negative 1. This is how we define I. But there is another number whose square is also negative 1. And that will be the opposite of I, right? For the same reason. So from here we can write z minus 1 is equal to plus minus i. Because when you square plus minus i, you always get i squared, which is negative 1. So that works. Now, adding 1 to both sides, we get z equals 1 plus minus i. That gives us two of the solutions to this equation. Let's go ahead and solve the other one. Add 2z. And then use the exact same idea. You can write this as z plus 1 squared equals negative 1. This time it's slightly different. You're going to write this as z plus 1 is equal to plus minus i and then z is going to become negative 1 plus minus i. So this gives us four solutions and we were expecting four solutions because this is a 
quartic equation. Make sense? So if you wanted to write all these solutions separately, you could write negative 1 minus i, negative 1 plus i, and then 1 minus i, and then 1 plus i. That's going to be our solution set. And this brings us to the end of the first method, not to the end of the video yet, so hang in there. And now we're going to take a look at the second method. Of course, not all equations are factorable by Sophie Germain's identity, but when it's available, why not use it, right? So let's go back to the original problem, z to the fourth is equal to negative four. So we're basically looking for a complex number whose fourth power is negative four. In other words, we're looking for fourth roots of negative four. That's what we're looking for, right? Fourth roots, and I say roots because there are four of them, right? Remember, a complex number has four fourth roots, three cube roots, two square roots, and so on and so forth. So, how do we find them? The easiest method is probably to express this in polar form and then go by the trigonometric form. So, let's go ahead and write the negative four as what? Negative four actually appears on the real axis and makes a pi radian angle or 180 degree angle, right? So we can basically express it as r times e to the i theta, theta being pi, r being 4, because its distance from 0 is 4. Make sense? So it's going to be 4 times e to the power i pi. But here's a problem with this notation. This is only one of the solutions, but this is multi-valued. Obviously, adding 2 pi to this is going to bring you to the same point, but when you take the fourth root, it's going to become a different angle. Make sense? So there's multiple uh, representations of the same thing, it's, since it's multivariate. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to write this as pi plus a multiple of 2 pi, or I'm going to keep adding... 2 pi to it, and then take the fourth root. Let's go ahead and do this first. If you take the fourth root of the r first, and then to take the fourth root of e to the i pi, you're just going to raise it to the power 1 fourth, which is going to give you this number right here. We'll talk about what that means in a little bit, but that's going to be one of the solutions, z. And then an, a, another solution can be found by just raising, uh, increasing this to 3 pi. So if what happens if z to the fourth is equal to 4 times e to the power 3i pi. When you divide by 4, you're going to get the fourth root of 4 e to the power 3i pi over 4. So what happened here was you basically added 2 pi over 4 to the angle, which is equivalent to pi over 2. Why? Because the whole thing is 2 pi, and you have to split up into 4 pieces, and that's going to give you pi over 2. So all the roots are actually going to be pi over 2 uh, radians apart. In other words, they're going to be equally spaced. So to find the next one, all you have to do is just add 2 pi over 4 to this, which is going to give you 5i pi over 4, and you're going to add one more time, and that's going to give you e to the power 7i pi over 4. Of course, we're able to write this in a different way. I'll show you in a little bit. But notice that the fourth root of 4 is the same thing as square root of 2. So we can replace all of those with square root of 2s. And let's go ahead and do that now. And that's going to give us square root of 2, square root of 2, square root of 2, and square root of 2, which is a little simpler. And let's go ahead and evaluate just one of these. The others are going to be very similar. For example, what is root 2 times e to the power i pi over 4? That is square root of 2 times cosine pi over 4 plus i sine pi over 4. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. Cosine pi over 4 is going to be 1 over root 2, and then this is just going to be 1 over root 2 again. When root 2s cancel out, we're going to end up with 1 plus i. And remember, that was one of the solutions we found with the first method. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.